a short one actually, and I'm here as a stand-in for my colleagues that could not be here. Uh, hello? Christoph is the main author of this uh, talk. Niels was also the co-author of the Arista package talk that I accidentally gave in the morning session. Um, because I stand in for both people, I mix that up. Uh, but do not fear if you are explicitly here for the Arista paper. All the slides are online available. You can look them, them up on, on GitHub and you might later on ask me uh, for any details and we can discuss that again and make a private session on that paper if you wish to. But uh, as I said, this will also be a short one. We just want to introduce you into our package that is used to calculate mortality tables for archaeological populations. And I hope, because of this is short, maybe we can have a longer discussion also in the end, because the discussion uh, that we had in the morning session was quite stimulating and looking very much forward that we can continue that before lunch. Okay, to mortar. And now I'm Christoph Rinne here. Um, mortar is a package, as I said, for calculating life tables or mortality tables in bioarchaeology. And the use of these life tables uh, in demography dates back quite, has quite a long history already. The aim in demography is to identify the current state and projecting future developments of population. So not in archaeology, but in demography as such. In bioarchaeology, it enables to, the comparison of mortality pa patterns across time and space because it's a standardized format. And we have to keep in mind that those two things are actually, although they look very similar, are different things because on the one side you talk about, uh, uh, what is it, census data and talk about uh, living population, while in bioarchaeology you talk about uh, dead people, mortality patterns, and they come up with uh, some slightly different uh, aspects. So you can't just apply analyzers that are used in census data towards uh, dead people, so to say. That's what I just, uh, yeah, that's what I just said in a way. Problems with bioarchaeological data that we have is uh, the aging of the uh, adults is quite problematic and this is due to the different uh, standards and uh, um, calibration populations that were used to set up these aging standards for anthropologists. The representativity of the data can be questioned because, um, I mean, we have, of course, we have a selection of people that are buried within an archaeological site and the, these probably do not re, uh, represent the full um, population, contemporary population of the past. And the assumption of a stationary population is quite questionable, which resulted in the fact that life tables have gone somewhat out of fashion. Currently, they are just attached to an archaeological report, at least in Germany, uh, and they are kind of an appendum and not worked so much uh, with that. And we would like to um, change that. And we still think that life tables are very interesting to make archaeological interpretations out of mortality patterns. So this is a typical uh, life table from Aksadi Nemiskeri. Uh, the classical publication on that topic. The advantages are they are very comparable because they are standardized, they are easily computable, so it is not uh, so much uh, fancy uh, calculations involved that and you see, you look to the same data, in the end it's just aging of dead people from very different angles. For example, you can have the um, dying probability, uh, the expectation uh, of uh, the life expectation at a certain age, and so in the end it's the same data, but you can ask very different questions on the same data with these tables. Um, Mortar is now a package that provides functions to calculate these tables because currently in R, there, is, uh, there are only uh, uh, packages available that work with census data, but for archaeological data, there were no package available, so we developed one. The package essentially consists of three functions. We have a function to prepare a live table to a standard format that can be then computed by the live table function itself. And then we have uh, uh, special plot functions to give you the curves uh, that results from the live table calculations. Trap life table is uh, quite straightforward. 
you can have your original data, you can enter uh, data if you have already pooled uh, populations, so we have uh, age class and then the number of individuals that you can also use this uh, argument for. Then you can group uh, your data, usually it's probably sex, male, female, undetermined, but you can also have uh, such things like rich graves, poor graves, or whatever you like to separate your populations. Um, then you can choose which, with which method you want to calculate the age cohorts. The standard method that we use is zero, one year, five years, and then five years going on. But if you have very specific standards like uh, juvenile, adult, and so on, that come with different age groups, then you can implement that here. Then uh, we have the age range, and this is set to include it. This means if you have uh, something like 20 to 40 for an individual, does that mean that this individual was actually possibly 40 or does it mean that it's only getting towards 39 and 40 is part of a different age class? With included, you include the values, the other possible uh, setting is excluded, then it would mean that uh, this uh, 40 would be excluded. Okay, and then we have the simple function to calculate the life table and it does all the computation that is necessary to calculate the life table. You put in the uh, result of the prep life table function and then you can choose if you want to have an age correction for children under five that tend to die not in the middle of their age class but earlier on. And you can also specify if you like to correct that which kind of age correction you use. Standard is uh, a third. <coughs> so if you have that, you can apply that to a, um, a real case study. In this case, it's the early Neolithic uh, uh, LBK cemetery of Nitra, which is kind of classical uh, LBK cemetery. And recently, Whittle et al. had collected a lot of new dates for uh, these and re-evaluated the available evidence. So we used their uh, yeah, age ex uh, estimations, sex estimations, as an input for our mortar package. And with the prep life table, we input our Nitra values. They come like that. So sex, age start, age end. Uh, we use the Nitra values. We group it by sex. Sex is the column name of that column that we used to take to group. Age begin and age end are also here the column names, but you can also put in their vectors directly. And the age range is inclusive. And what comes out of that is uh, a list of three objects, female, male, and uh, undetermined, with their respective uh, age groups pooled. And with that, we can go to the uh, life table function itself. And here is the calculation for, uh, what is it? Female, male, undetermined, and all. So we also produce uh, pooled uh, for all data sets, for all uh, uh, categories, uh, one list item there. And you might probably uh, can see here that we have uh, in the female situation, we have a life ex expectancy of 38, in the male, a life expectancy of 31 by birth, which is kind of, uh, yeah, surprisingly big for a prehistoric population. But keep in mind, we have also the undetermined and those are, of course, mostly the children. So here the life expectation at birth is quite low. Still, it is the case that we see here in the female situation a uh, lower life expectancy than the male situation, which is also contradicting a bit the biological evidence that you would expect. Um, so now we can plot the whole stuff and uh, probably look at that. The, sorry for the small... Uh, small captions here. This is the uh, dx value and you can see uh, very many of the undetermined have died very early. No surprise, it's all the children. Uh, and we have the females that have probably died much more in their earlier state than the males. So reflecting what we just saw with the age expectancy. And you can also uh, plot the probability of death, and again, for the undetermined, that's in early stage very high. 
and uh, later on it's lowered. But you always see this black line that gives you the background for the total population. And so on and so forth. The survivorship function for the individuals, the uh, ex life expectancy uh, during their uh, life, and the population age structure. That is an, uh, something that we added to the uh, uh, traditional life tables. So we calculate a population age structure for a living population. You always have to keep in mind there's a selection going on on the burial ground, which is also reflected here because uh, the, the older men are there because older men have a higher potential to be buried within a proper uh, burial ground in this case than the females, giving us the tools to uh, analyze that from an ideological standpoint. So from an anthropological standpoint, you probably would say this is an error or this is a bias in their data, but this bias is actually very interesting for us as archaeologists to come up with some ideas about the social structure. Okay, I will not read this full statement of Christoph, um, but it essentially says that um, for archaeologists, uh, situations where the anthropologist would say we have a biased or distorted uh, um, sample, uh, we can make out of that archaeological interpretations that give us some tools to identify social structures in the past. That's it. Essentially, you can find uh, the package on GitHub, Morta, and also we have a Cran release for uh, this version 1 that you can easily install in your R environment. You will find also these slides on GitHub. Uh, if you want to look them up later on. And that was it. Thank you for your attention. Looking forward to your questions.